never try flipping over someone that has the high ground. But if you've ever wanted to make uh, glowing lava, specifically a glowing lava diorama, you might want to stay tuned because this kind of worked. Welcome back to Crafted by Metamorphic Customs. As usual, I'll be starting off with XPS foam, and what I've done here is build a tray or a bed out of XPS foam. Uh, measuring here so you can see there's four inches there on the left, but overall, this tray has a length of 24 inches uh, long or wide by about 16 inches deep. And there's, again, four inches on the left there that are not inset. There's no hollow area there. And that's for a reason. That's because I'm going to be using a, a 20 by 16 inch acrylic sheet over this to get, create that lava effect. The lighted areas, and this will have LEDs, will be sitting in this bed. And as you can see, this is basically two layers of one inch foam. The edges here are about half an inch, maybe a little less than half an inch wide. And the hollow area again is about 16 by 20. And speaking of that sheet, here it is. I just purchased this off Amazon and it is a completely clear sheet. Of course, it's got that uh, brown protective uh, sheeting over both sides. So I'll have to take that off eventually. But as you can see, it perfectly fits within this, uh, within this cutout I've made here. So the lights again will go under this and will shine through the transparent sheet. And about halfway through here, I'm gonna build the high ground or the hill. So let's take a look at the LED lights. And this is exactly what I'll be using. Uh, kind of like the LED strips I use to light my details, but this is a little higher end. It's a, people use this to make neon signs. Uh, so I got it in warm white. And that's what it looks when it's all lit up. So this will, I think this will give a good effect, good lava effect. So I'm just gonna sketch out more or less where I want Anakin to stand eventually. Plus I'm going to sketch out little areas of the colder lava, the lava that looks black when it's flowing. And then I'm going to start adding supports for that acrylic base. So wherever it's black, you're not gonna see through or it's not gonna glow. That's where I've added supports. And I'm mixing some Mod Podge with some yellow paint. And I'm gonna use this mix just to coat the inside of this um, this XPS foam, just in case. I, don't, I didn't want it to have, since it's blue or greenish, I didn't want it to have a blue greenish tinge when the light shines through. So I, as you can see, I gave it a few layers of this yellow paint and uh, just to make sure. Maybe if I would've, wouldn't have painted it, it would've been fine, but I just wanna make sure. So now I've just glued in the other end of that LED strip here, and I'm going to eventually make a hole so that that can poke through to the outside, but I'm setting up the first part of that strip within the XPS foam. And I'm just gonna kind of layer it in here until I figure it out, so it kind of lays all right. Uh, most of it's gonna be there towards the left end because that's gonna be where the transparent acrylic sheet is focused. And on my right hand there is gonna be the high ground, the hill. And I used a combination of hot glue and uh, PVA glue, Elmer, Elmer's or Aileen's glue, to just glue this down, as well as the little clips that came in that LED strip set. And this is me carving out a hole on the side there so that I can stick the, um, the adapter plug that's gonna go into the AC plug, I should say. So that's easy enough, just fit it in and that'll stick out so later on I could plug it into the wall. And I'm gonna use this parchment. This is a baking parchment paper uh, and it's great for diffusing lights. So I'm gonna lay that down there. I secured it in place with some pins. I found that to be the easiest way. I tried thumbtacks but pins were much better. And I'm gonna peel off one side of the protective sheet from the, or protective backer from the acrylic sheet. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave one side on, just cause it's it's so easy to scratch acrylic. Um, so I'm gonna leave one side on, but this side that I'm peeling off, this is the side I'm going to start working on uh, to start creating that the lava flow or the lava texture. And speaking of, I'm using this very, very thin piece of XPS foam to cut off, um, cut out semi-random shapes. 
these will be the cold parts of the lava the black parts i previously mentioned which should not glow should be somewhat blacked out so those will go over the acrylic sheet to create those dark areas so again kind of random i'm going to actually try to put this on the border since those borders will be blacked out by the bottom xps frame of the tray in the bottom anyway so that's kind of what it looks I'm just gonna glue those down but what i've done here is created the high ground hills which as you can see it's just layers and layers of one inch foam uh, that's the thickest i can get in my area so i just cut off layer after layer and uh once i've done that i'm going to glue each layer down i used pva uh, glue here and specifically i'm using aileen's or eileen's glue whatever however you pronounce that but you can use elmer's glue uh it works just fine uh what i did there was i as you can see i put all that glue in the center and then i'll come back with hot glue because hot glue sticks really quickly and i'll use some hot glue just around the edge so it can hold it down hold the two pieces together while the much better pva glue or elmer's glue finally dries right you don't want it slipping and that's what it looks like when it's all glued together clearly we're going to have to do some sculpting now to make it look like an actual you know hill or rocks or sand or whatever it is but i'll just start carving with my utility knife along the edges but mostly what i'm going to use here is what you see right now it's my old lead up soldering iron uh, which I'm using to melt foam and create this rock text texture if you want to call it that I think it looks like like rock or dirt sand it looks some somewhat organic um, again as I always say I'm not following any kind of pattern I'm kind of just using the soldering iron to create holes um, and just create that texture you yeah, know melting it away one thing i kept in mind while doing this now i mean it's a high ground right it's basically a hill going upwards but if you just make it a straight incline the figure will be impossible to stand it's just going to keep falling so yeah i had to make areas that you know were flat in order for to, to put the figure's feet um otherwise it just wouldn't work uh in real life you could just you know obviously you have you stand on, and balance yourself and that'll work just fine and in this format you've got to have flat areas for a figure so some artistic license here <laughs> when making a hill it just sounds funny uh so just did that and that was pretty quick and what i'm going to use to glue that hill down is a two-part epoxy this is a uh, gorilla glue two-part epoxy that comes in the uh, injector tube and same thing I did with uh, the PVA glue. I, I put the epoxy in the middle and a little bit of hot glue around the edges here to make sure the uh, hill, which we've finalized here, glues on and that hot glue will keep it down secure while the two-part epoxy dries. And then I'm going to go ahead and start painting the hill with a mix of Mod Podge and very dark brown paint, almost black. Just gonna apply that all over i should also point out that when i glued the hill to the acrylic sheet uh that's the only place i glued the hill to in other words the acrylic sheet and the hill yes they're attached but they're not attached to the frame the bottom uh part that i started off with so i'll still be able to lift that acrylic sheet and the hill off and work on the bottom as well as the top by itself that'll help out too being because I, as you can see, I haven't removed the other side of the acrylic protector. So I'll need to be able to remove that to remove that protector. Um, once I'm done painting both the hill and the acrylic sheet, which will be the lava. Now I'm gonna switch over to Golden Brand Clear Granular Gel. So this is like a, I don't want to say it's like a paste, but it's, it is a gel. It is what the name implies. But the gel, which dries clear, uh, glossy and completely, well, completely clear, completely transparent. It also has um, clear beads or chunks of, of something that's <laughs> just completely transparent. And that's what gives it the texture. That's why it's granular. Uh, once it dries, it'll give a nice... Uh, texture but also remain clear that's the, the important part I'm also putting a little bit of this on the hill just to bring over some of that uh, texture over to the hill area uh, 
again, count how many times I say texture in this video. And let me know down in the comments. Um, whatever I didn't cover with the granular gel, I'm covering with the heavy, heavy modeling gel uh, from Liquitex brand that I used in my last video, which was the Alien Hive or the Alien Derelict Ship. So I'm using that here and this will dry nice and clear as well. As you can see, now it's completely dry. The granular gel, the bits that still seem white or like snow, uh, they're still drying. It's dry to the touch, but you gotta wait 24 hours for it to cure. But for all intents and purposes, we can start painting now. But before that, let me remove the other side of the backing because now I think we're ready to start painting and I'm going to need to see the light shining through uh, to see how the paint goes on and where I need to add more paint and whatnot. So I'm going to use this uh, Createx uh, fluorescent yellow paint uh, that's specifically for an airbrush and I'm just going to go ahead and start applying that here. This color, this fluorescent yellow, I'm just going to apply everywhere. Uh, everywhere on the acrylic sheet, not on the hill, but just on the uh, everywhere that's supposed to be lava basically so let's uh turn on the lights that's what it looks like so far so so far so good but now i'm going to hit it with createx fluorescent orange so i'm going to get progressively darker from yellow to orange to red and then to black in the lava areas so you'll see i start painting the the cooler sections the the the, the most hot or the hottest sections of the lava of course the bright yellow so everything that progressively gets darker are the cooler areas. So we want to get to the point where we have black areas floating on top of the lava. So the the parts that have dried out, I don't know what the name of that is, the molten rock, I guess. Uh, but here I'm just I'm just hitting it with a fluorescent orange, and in some cases I'm coming back and hitting it with red, uh, just opaque red, red, not fluorescent red. And you saw it there when I turned off the lights for a second. Basically, it looks like a I like to call it deep dish pizza uh, but now it's time to move on to the brush and I'm using a very very dark red here it's almost a brown uh, you could just use dark brown it doesn't have to be red here and again I'm hitting those sections which are going to be the coolest areas of the lava so to summarize fluorescent yellow fluorescent orange and then opaque red and then dark red or dark brown Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're liking this so far and if you want to see more diorama videos like this. So here I'm still applying that dark red or that dark brown, whatever you prefer. And again, this is the, the uh, coolest or the coldest, if you want to go with coldest, but coldest areas of the lava. Nothing I would touch by hand if this was real lava, but technically speaking, this is the coldest area. And now I'm going to move on to straight black. Again, uh, just go over, keep saying it, but now it's the coolest areas of the lava. So you progressively put less and less, or you cover less and less area. You start with the yellow, that's everything. Then you put down the orange, and then you put even less dark red, and even less black. And that's what it looks like when the lights are off. Now it's time to permanently adhere that acrylic uh, base and the hill to the bottom frame so again i'm going to be using the same two-part clear epoxy that i used to stick the hill to the acrylic now i'm sticking the acrylic to the bottom base and i'm just pouring the entire tube of this thing uh it's about six bucks so kind of pricey uh, but what's good about two-part epoxy you got to mix it well what's good about this stuff is that it has a great bond and it's good for this foam because it will not melt XPS foam like super glue will. Um, and it sets much harder and I would say, yeah, much harder and faster than PVA glue. Uh, PVA glue, although it's great for foam, probably, I'm pretty sure, would not hold this. Uh, the acrylic sheet, along with the multiple layers that make up of XPS foam that make up this hill, we need something strong to hold it down. So this two-part epoxy uh, by, Gorilla, by Gorilla Glue is great. And once everything's down, I just painted the sides and the back just straight black, and this is the end result. Um, it was, it was, you know, it went by 
much faster than I thought it would take, given all the electronics. It was exactly as I imagined it uh, before I started working on the dial, uh, which is a surprise to me. I thought I would run into difficulties and I just got lucky here. So I kind of really like it. Here's a close up of the lava. It works well with um, Darkseid Anakin's uh, base and blends into that lava fairly nicely when both are lit up. Uh, Obi-Wan stands pretty good. I can put him all the way at the, at the top if I wanted to, but he's good there. This one was fun. I usually don't get to make something um, with that amount of LED lights. I mean, it's, as you saw in the video, it has an entire strip of LED lights. I really wanted it to glow uh, through all the fluorescent paint and through that clear piece of acrylic. And we'll finish off this video with my favorite Anakin pose. This is the pose I think I'll leave him in with his CCFL lightsaber. By the way, if you want to see me make a CCFL lightsaber, a little tutorial, let me know. I'll make a video of it. And the best way to let me know is down in the comments. Leave a comment, tell me you want to see a CCFL tutorial or any diorama tutorial, and I'll be glad to make it for you. Until then, guys, please like the video and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next episode. Until then, you know what to do. Stay crafted.